Ohio State is back in the news. They got the number two ranked class in 2025. Busy week for them, not only in the recruiting trail, they got a new running back coach as well, replacing Tony Alford and Carlos Lachlan from Oregon. We'll talk about him in a minute. But think about this run, man. Uh, Ohio State getting it done. Tarvis Alford, number seven linebacker in the country from Florida. London Merritt, number 16 defensive lineman now at IMG Academy. Desi Jones, number 25 receiver in the country. And Deshaun Stewart, the number 29 safety. Uh, like I said, the Buckeyes now up to number two in the country in 2025. Drew a lot of firepower here. Three of those guys are in the top two, four, seven. Uh, Deshaun Stewart, not far off, right? One of the highest rated three stars there is as well. Out of all those names, Alfred, Merritt, Desi Jones, Deshaun Stewart, is there one of those names that kind of jumps off the page to you? Well, I watched all of them over the weekend, and I had sent you a uh, a message. I think it was on Saturday or Sunday. I'm like, all right, Ohio State, this is this is a weekend for them. How about Deshaun Stewart, the safety? You know, didn't have a ton of exposure to him. And you think about the Buckeyes defensive back class. I feel like we bring it up every time. We talk about Ohio State. They got the two five-star corners, Devin Sanchez. They got Naeem Offer. And then they got what I think is maybe the top slot corner in the country committed and Blake Woodby. So everyone was wondering, okay, where are the safeties? I mean, there's got to be some guys that play over the top. And they get this Deshaun Stewart kid, Coop, you put him on and he's playing corner and he's doing it at a high level. I think this is a kid that can maintain phase and his ability to play the football when it's airborne, he doesn't panic. So I, I think it stands out what he does out on the perimeter. And then you see him in run support, super physical tackler. I mean, for a guy his size, he gets dudes on the ground. I mean, he flows extremely well downhill. So it's easy to see why Ohio State is billing him as a safety. But I think he could play, you know, some slot corner if needed. I think he could play a boundary role if needed. So that's the one that jumps out to me, but I like these other guys. And and really, I think the story is, okay, this defensive back class, I know there's some other pieces floating around out there, but this thing is absolutely loaded. Yeah, Naeem Offert, uh, Devin Sanchez, right? You think about Ohio State, uh, I think being one of two schools, the other one being Oregon uh, when it comes to Fahim Delane as well. Um Drew, just on Deshaun Stewart a little bit, play style-wise, play style-wise, I want to make myself very clear. Kind of reminds me a little bit of Zay Mincy, right? I mean, you think about a guy we went back and forth on, six foot plus. The other thing about Stewart, six foot seven wingspan, just like yeah. Mincy. Uh, the, the thing about Stewart is that we don't have any verified speed on him, but uh, short area quickness is really good. I think if there was one question mark, it'd be the recovery speed, the ability to play the deep part of the field. But Drew, I mean, even if he has to transition into a safety role or more of a nickel role, I think he can do that. Like a lot of these safeties, you know, when they transition from corner to safety, it's because they don't have the speed or athleticism to play out on the perimeter. I actually like his ability in man-to-man. -man. Uh, he's a pretty interesting cat. The other guy, that's listed as a receiver, but I kind of like the defensive tape was Desi Jones at the same school. You know, another guy six foot plus 180 pounds. He had a four one shuttle uh, to his name. Drew, I like him a lot. Uh, had over a thousand yards receiving, uh, I believe, in 2022. Felt just short of that uh, as a junior uh, in 2023. But Drew, I like this kid. Like play temperament wise, I thought he was one of the best open field tacklers there was that I've, you know I've evaluated so far in the 2025 class. And he's going to play receiver. And the reason I bring that up, I love his temperament. Uh, I love the way he plays. And I think we had a lot of questions: where was Ohio State going to go after Javen Boggs? Um, I like this kid just in terms of athletic composition, what he brings to the table. Another guy you get out of New Jersey as well. I think that's some added bonus points there too. Uh, love the way he plays, and then. Down the line, Drew, like to be able to go to the southeast and get guys like Tarvis Alford that I think Tarvis Alford is just a beautiful scheme fit uh, for Ohio State and Jim Knowles. I don't think he's a, a fit for everybody, right? It kind of reminds me of Jordan Hall when he went to Michigan State from IMG. Like, I love this fit for Alford in Ohio State. I think he's one of the best run defenders uh, in the country. I think you and I talked about it. Like, kind of reminds me a little bit of Bradley Shaw who came out of Hoover uh, last year. Maybe – some question marks in terms of uh, dropping in coverage, being a man-to-man -man defender, but these guys are made to play the run. I love Alfred. And then the London Merritt kid, I want to get your take on this because he might be pound for pound one of the most – one of the I, – I should – let me rephrase. Pound for pound, like one of the best football players, uh, like pure football players um, 
But in terms of the measurables, he's going to be able to put on some weight. He's under 6'3", I think more 6'2 and a half-ish. Strong, explosive, lower body. Um, they use him a lot of different ways last year as a junior. I mean, you can put him in a two-point. You can put him in a three-point. He played the five technique. He played three technique. Quick twitch, explosive, and fast. I mean, you talk about a guy that plays with very efficient movement, doesn't waste a lot of movement. Um, that's one of those guys. I see him more like high floor, but a guy that's going to be a really, really good football player on Saturdays. I think Merritt's one that will kind of fly under the radar, but if you're an Ohio State fan, this is exactly what they need to inject into that front seven in that pass rush. I think he's a a power in, but I think you could put on the weight and 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 kick him inside as a as a three technique if if you needed to. He's an interesting one. I want to know how IMG is going to use him. You mentioned he was at Woodward Academy last year, kind of out of a two point stance. You know, sometimes he was as an inside linebacker. Um, and it's just interesting dimensions in the sense of, of what you read off. I mean, he's right around 265 pounds. Uh, but the testing from that pro day at IMG Academy certainly jumps out. And I, again, I just think for Ohio State, you know, looking for premium pass rushers, they bring in Edric Houston last year. Now you're following it up with London Merritt, another kid that's originally from the Peach State. I, I agree with that. And you know, Desi Jones, it's it's funny. This might be the first guy where I actually lean offense where you lean defense. It's normally the other way around. I, I think upgrade over Javon Boggs if you just want to look at the tape and put them side by side. I mean, he's a clearly better route runner. It sets guys up with double moves, explosive in terms of getting out of his cuts. And to me, given everything Ohio State's brought in over the past few years, they haven't had this kind of dynamic slot or a guy that's actually emerged. And I think Desi Jones can be that individual on the inside. Back to uh, London Merritt for a second. You know, the the name that kind of comes to mind for me is kind of like Cam Linhart. You know, there are so many times when he was at IMG Academy, I think you and I were trying to figure out what is this guy going to be? Ends up going to Nebraska, having a really productive freshman year. It's going to be interesting uh, to kind of see what IMG decides to do with with Merritt. I mean, Drew, I think the one thing that has become abundantly clear is that he's going to play in a three-point stance, right? He's a defensive lineman. I think at one point was was listed as an edge. Uh, we've quickly course corrected on that. That being said, Drew, like pound for pound, quality-wise, in terms of what Ohio State's bringing in, I mean, these are really, really good football players. Ohio State just year after year continues to just kind of elevate the ceiling of their team, but at the same time, like you don't feel like a lot of these are like risky takes, you know, like these are good football players that I think not only can contribute over the long term, but I think a lot of these guys could potentially play early as well. Yeah, I think Brandon Dorless coming out of Oregon in this upcoming NFL draft. That's the comp I kind of have for London Merritt, kind of same thing. You know, versatile guy up front, you know, can play in a three, four, can play in a four, three. No, I, I think you are you are right, Cooper, in terms of elevating that floor. And hey, here's the other thing. Ohio State, two of the top 15 ranked prospects in Florida are now committed to the Buckeyes and Alford and London Merritt. You know, FSU's got two inside the top 15, and then it's kind of wide open. <laughs> the Big Ten seems to be finding some success in the Sunshine State. And Ohio State probably isn't done. Jamie French, Vernell Brown out there. Um, Florida, once again, being good to the Buckeyes. <laughs>